Hi everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome to my quilting and floss tube series here on my YouTube channel. And today I have a tutorial featuring how to do a round finish as well as how to create a bow. So if you are wondering how to make this really fun double loop finger bow, stay tuned. Now I am quickly going to show you that I am taking this round ornament from Chantal's 141 design and I am going to spray paint it with some white chalk white spray paint on one side. Yes, I am using some more of my shallow uh, plastic totes. I have tons of these that I'm not using. And so I am actually just using it for spray painting. Now I did let this sit for an hour and then I'm going to come back and I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna spray the other side. I decided I wanted both sides sprayed. In fact, I accidentally had bumped it so it's got a little paint on it. I just wanna make sure I have plenty. I like to do a nice even coat all over, make sure your spray paint is shook up really well. And I do want to highly recommend that you don't store your spray paint in very, very cold temperatures. Like um, I off in the summer, my spray paint was out in the garage, but I did go make sure I got all of it and put it away in the house, in the basement somewhere, um, because otherwise it's just going to get clogged. Then after another hour or maybe two, I came back and you, I'm going to sand the edges. Now I'm using an electric corner sander here. I also have a round sander, but you can use sandpaper. You do not have to have a sander. In fact, um, you probably would have more control if you just used a regular sander. I am lazy and so I had this and I like to use it. <laughs> I like the, two, the power tools, I guess, but I am just going to kind of go over the edges a little bit where I had too much, I want it very distressed. If you don't want yours distressed, don't sand it. Um, you would simply go ahead and just put a nice clear coat on top. I think a clear coat helps seal everything nicely. And I like the matte clear coat if I'm gonna do a chalkboard finish. Um, so that is what I will use. When I am done sanding the edges of my ornament, I take a dry soft cloth and I just make sure the ornament's super clean before I take the clear coat and spray it. Then after you've added the spray, the clear coat, you're going to spray one side, let it set for at least an hour to, until touching, flip it over and do the other side. So it is very time consuming as far as, it hardly takes any time at all to paint. Once the painting is done, it's really just dry time and then the rest of it goes together super fast and I'm going to talk you through it in real time. Hello everyone. Okay, so today I am going to share how to do a round finish. Um, I did this finish. <coughs> Excuse me. I did this finish with the Shannon Christine Festive Drink Freebie from her Black Friday. And I'm finishing it on one of the Chantal's uh, 141 Design Mystery Make-Along Box. This was something that was offered a while back and there were a bunch of boards backers, ornament backers that came in it, including this ornament shape and this one. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. I believe this one, this size, is available in her shop. I don't believe the smaller one is. We are going to be creating the smaller one, but the, the steps are going to be the same no matter what kind of finish. So maybe you just have a round that you want to do. Maybe you're doing the stitching with the housewives month to month and you want to do some rounds, um, which I'm going to do. And I will share with, I have an idea that just popped into my head. So um, hopefully I'll share that soon. But that, we're going to basically be creating this today. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do first. What we're using, this is the Mary, and this is the A Merry Little Christmas House from Cecilia Turner for, uh, of Heart in Hand. This was a freebie that she gave to Fat Quarter Shop when she did their floss tube several months ago and I, I printed it off immediately. I downloaded it, I printed it off, and then it sat. And I don't even know why. Maybe I wasn't in the mood for Christmas stitching and of course now we are. I'm gonna move this out of the way too. Anything we can do to get out of the way. 
but now I am and this <clears throat> excuse me I literally I was fine until I started filming um anyhow this took like about an evening maybe I had to finish a few stitches the next morning I can't quite remember but when I'm stitching I kind of continuously would check and I know this one is going to be a little tighter. Let's move this one back into the screen than this one. Um, meaning it, the stitch is going to be a little bit closer. So I was double checking quite often to make sure that everything was fitting. I did do some confetti stitches that are not in the chart for some extra snow. So those aren't in the chart. You can add them or not if you, you know, if you want to. You can also change the colors. I did, I, use the called for classic color works colors well i just completely messed up my um my ironing job <clears throat> which isn't going to matter so i just wanted to show how that fit now for both of these for this one i used the three and a half inch sticky board circle from fat quarter shop this time we're going to use i think this is like two and two and three i don't know it's a little more than two and a half the exact measurement is on the Fat Quarter Shop site, and I will have a link to it down in the description below. So here is what I am going to do. This is just kind of what I found to work the easiest for me. I am going to kind of lay it on here, and you can see that these corners, the top of the tree, and then the very little red um, are going to be super super close I am just going to actually you know what I'm not even going to draw a line this is I, I cut this down already once well of course hold please you could leave this in a square shape but I personally like mine in a circle shape there's probably a much higher tech way of doing this but I am just going to Cut it into a circle and I purposely am doing this real time hopefully I don't decide to voice it over so you can see how quick and easy it is so it's messy it's totally fine okay we're just gonna set that aside for a minute and I'm just gonna stick my needle so I don't lose it and I have some leftover quilt batting here and I do use warm and white so it's fairly thin I know someone asked me I saw a comment I can't find it of course I when I went back to find it I can't find it now if I would show a comparison I don't really have two to show you this is two layers of batting so it makes it nice and puffy I like two layers if you're using a thicker batting um, go ahead and just use one layer or you could use more if you want it to be even puffier So I'm taking the backing paper off of my sticky board and this is way more batting than what I need So I'm just going to put it up in the corner And I'm going to cut around it And we have completely stuck The batting to the sticky board. We're not going to stick the stitch to the sticky board because I want it to be a little poofy. I like the little poofy factor. Okay, all I did, and I did this for the big one too, is I'm going to hold it in place like that with my hand. And I'm gonna go around and cut again and cut another circle. This one is not sticking, so this one is not gonna stick to it, but I don't really think you need it to. Now, if this was a square, you could use a ruler and cut it perfectly, whatever size. Or if you have die cuts, circle die cuts that are this size, you could use circle die cuts. Okay, so I have plenty of batting left over for another ornament. Just going to set that aside as well. And get rid of our trash. So here are our two circles. It doesn't have to be super perfect, really. You're never going to see that. And we're just going to set that aside for a minute as well. 
So we're going to pull our stitch back in. I should mention this is a good opportunity to heat up your heat gun. Mine is on and heating up. Okay, so we're going to pull our cross stitch piece back in. And I just have a regular cross stitch needle and any color of embroidery floss is going to work here. And you are going to want a pretty long piece of embroidery floss. I am going to use whatever is left on this particular skein. It doesn't matter the color. Um, it is not going, you're not going to be able to see it. In fact, let's just put that there. I will measure this. Let me um, find the end. I probably am going a little over the top, but there is nothing worse than finding out you don't have enough floss. So I am folding that really long piece in half. And let me measure it. So there's 36. It is long, it's like 100 inches long. So it's probably like 50, 52 inches when it's folded in half. Again, for this size, it's probably more than what I need. However, you don't want to come up short and I'll show you why. So we're going to thread our embroidery floss on a needle. I'm just using a size 26 cross stitch needle. Um, you could use any kind of needle here. It really doesn't matter. This is what I had handy. And we are going to put the two open ends through the eye of our needle like we would if we were going to be do using the loop method for stitching. Oh man. Let me trim off that end. It's ick. Let's try with a uh, clean end. Okay. So I'm just going to, thre I've threaded my needle. I've got my loop on this end. What we're going to do is I'm actually just going to take a tiny little uh, bite and I'm going to go about here, I don't know, maybe about a half inch in. And I am simply going to just take my needle through the, the cloth and I'm going to secure it with like a loop, like if I was doing the loop method start. We're not, but that's going to secure that end. And then we are going to do a running stitch all the way around our circle. That's why I like to do mine in a circle, but you definitely don't have to if you can just stitch in a circle. I don't think I can. <laughs> so I do it this way and I do try to stitch somewhat as even as possible. You can see it's trying to gather even now. And we're going to go all the way around. This literally is so quick. So this is going to cinch this, our stitch into a circular shape that we can then attach to our mounting board. You guys will have to tell me in the comments if you are stitching ornaments. I am really loving the ornaments. I think these are the only two circle boards I have, so I might have to order some more of the bigger size one. Um, that quarter shop. I can't remember if the tin, the little tart tins are back in stock or not that fit this small size. But those are a great option as well. Really, really fun. Just, and of course you can do square finishes. I'm going to have some other finishes. I'm doing like a little pillow finish. So uh, it won't all be circles. I don't want all of them to look the same. Okay, so we're kind of back to almost where we started. And you can see it's really gathering up. So there is what we have. I am going to then take my sticky board with two layers of batting and we're going to place it right in here on our stitch. And here I'm going to play around a little bit 
seeing kind of where we're at. That looks pretty good. You can always adjust. We have not secured anything yet. So I have it in here and I'm going to take my string and pull. And I'm going to pull and pull until we have it nice. And kind of look and see what it's looking like. And that actually looks pretty good. It will clean up here in a minute. Oh, look how cute that's going to be, you guys. Here, let's take a peek. Won't that be cute? Okay, we're not quite done here on the back. So I'm going to just do another little tug. Because look how clean that makes the, the rounded edges now. So now we're going to do, it's not lacing, but it's kind of similar to lacing. This is why you need that extra long piece. We are going to go back and forth both directions. And we're going to pull pretty tight. And honestly, this is my least favorite part of this project. But it's also, I think, the most important. And I am going to go all the way. I probably, again, I mean, I don't know, <laughs> but I probably have a tendency to go over the top. But my philosophy is um, do more than you need to. Okay, so um, Ethan actually came home, so I had to take a little break. I am going to start going back the other way. I know I have a few more to do here, but we'll, we'll come back to that. I basically go back and forth until I feel like it is secure and not going to go anywhere and all of the edges look nice. Oh, like I think that one maybe pulled out. Maybe I didn't go far enough. that's better. So I'm just going to continue to do this and you don't want to go too close to the edge unless like you've surged it or, or zigzag stitched it or something because I do think um, it will pull through. I'm not terribly concerned with this being looking super great because we're go I'm going to glue mine. But I think this is probably one of this, the running stitch and then this, let's just call it lacing, it's not exactly, is really the most important as it gives you that nice snug finished look around the edge of your stitch. And there are lots of tutorials out there. I just wanted to have one on my channel. For anyone who asked about it or wanted to see, I'm also going to show you how to do a bow in this video. Basically, we're doing this ornament, but in mini size. Oh, Ethan's sneezing. I might sneeze too. I feel like it's really dusty today or something. All right, so it's looking pretty good. I think I'm just come back. And then I'm going to knot this here. Let me just... This is why I start with such a long piece of embroidery floss. I really, really recommend starting with a very long piece. So that you can... Uh, do all this with one pass. You could always knot it and, and you know add more if you need to. Okay, that's good. So now I'm going to flip it over and I'm just going to kind of double check and this looks really good actually. Isn't that cute? So we're just going to, let me see where I was. I'm going to go through, maybe I'll go through this way. Would that be easier? I'm just going to knot it 
I'm going to go through that a couple times and do a little knot. I might go through one more. I just don't want this to come undone. Again, I am going to hot glue it and you could always put a little glue on that knot if you're worried. Okay, there is our little round stitch. I think it's really cute. So let's grab our ornament now. And see how that's going to look. Now I definitely think it needs some rickrack. The only thing I need to determine, I think the big, yeah, I think the big. So here's what I like to do. Obviously around the curved edge, rickrack is going to be great. Around squares, we, when you have corners, 90 degree corners, it's a little trickier, um, but there, it is very possible and e you can, there's a great way to do it. But with this, you can do one continuous piece, but where it meets, it's kind of ugly. Well, you can't even see it really here. I did, did, I did, did. I did my best to hide it, but I'm hiding it with a bow. So we're gonna do the same thing here. I am going to take my stitch and I'm going to put just a little bit of glue up at the top. And I am going to just kind of tack down where it's starting my rickrack. And this is the Lori Holt vintage trim. This is the large size of the red. I think this color might be out of stock right now. But you could get any rickrack, any rickrack. Run to, you know, Michael's or Joann's or Hobby Lobby. All right. Or maybe even Walmart. I didn't even think to check Walmart. I had this, so I didn't need to. So I'm going to run a little bit. I do a little bit at a time. So I am kind of working from the back. I really, and then from the front, ouch, because you'll burn your fingers. And I just burn my fingers. And I just touched the glue multiple times. So I'm going to have to pause this and clean up my fingers so I don't get it all over everything. I want a pretty good little, I want those little points to stick out. Let me clean the, up my fingers. I'm literally incapable of using hot glue and not getting it everywhere. My best tip is to go slow with this part and just do a little section at a time. You have a lot more control to bend your rickrack the way you want. So I'm kind of going from the front and pressing and then I will come to the back and I'm going to press that point of the rickrack into the hot glue so it's secure. And we're going to continue this all the way around. It's very, it's not, not very, not very big. I made a joke one time with some friends. Um, oh, actually, I think it was in a, a card making class I was teaching online here not too long ago. How, um, oh no, we were in a chat. Never, it doesn't matter. Um, that if you use hot glue as a crafter, basically you have burned all feeling off in the tips of your finger. And <laughs> any, all of us, who are probably lifelong crafters, really, laughed because it's it's true. I swear the last time I did this, of course I wasn't filming it, it was, went so much smoother.
This heat gun gets really hot. I did so this is funny. I've had the same heat gun for like, I don't know, 20 years. It was this little mini one. Uh, it was kind of jank. <laughs> uh, and so I, I, I've been, I got this one this year and oh guys, why did I not get a new one earlier? I love it. What I don't love is the mess. I know some of you probably don't make this mess and you're laughing because I am just one hot mess today. All right, we are almost to come where we started. Let's just go ahead and add our glue. And this, one of the other great things about this particular glue, I have found it stays hot nice and long. And this one actually is going to meet up pretty close. So I'm pretty happy about that. Let's just gently, gently and see, it's meeting up perfectly. So that's actually going to work out really well. All right. And really, if I didn't have long nails, this would be a lot easier. Or I wouldn't have it all over my nails. As soon as we get this glued, I'm probably going to pause and go clean my hands. Because I definitely don't want glue on my stitch. Okay, so when we get here, here is my tip. I have I always leave it on here. I don't cut it off yet. So this is the this one is the one where it's going to meet up. So basically, I can go right here and cut that. And we shouldn't be able to see any raw edges. So let's just go ahead and Put a little glue and tap that down. Then I'm going to go ahead. If you wanted to, you could always mat your stitch on another piece of sticky board in a circle, um, or you could even use the big circle. With this little one, I'm not going to, obviously. I don't need to. It's going to fit. I've already painted and distressed, which I showed first. And we are going to line it up. And just press that right to our board. And I want it to lay pretty nice and flat and see some of that raw edge kind of did end up coming out, but my bow that I'm gonna put on will hide that. All right, let me clean up real quick and I'll be right back. Okay, so our stitch is on our little mini ornament. I think it looks super cute. Again, I really am kind of mad that I cut it too, I probably should have just overlapped it, but it will get covered up. So I think it looks good. Just gonna make sure any little strings are out of the way. And then I like to take some sort of a string or a twine. This is some um, Lawn Fawn. Um, it's a little bit thicker and I love it. I am gonna cut probably about 18 to 20 inches of this. It's not exactly specific, uh, perfect. And I am going to go ahead and fold it in half. I always like to have a little more. It's better to have more. And I am going to fold it in half like this. So again, I have like my loops, my little loop here. We're going to string this through our ornament. And there's all kind. you can get all kinds of this stuff at any store. I was just at Michael's and Hobby Lobby today and they both have sim very similar. So we've strung it through our ornament because I want to add some beads. And this one I am going to use like red, white, and green because we have green in this stitch. I think that will be cute. 
Oh, wait, and these beads are from Amazon. I put them in my little shop so you can find that very easily. Um, I have all kinds of beads in my shop. I have another project I'll be sharing soon. I kind of like this. I think that's what we're going to go with. I keep them in these jars. You can get all kinds of storage jars. I saw similar ones at Michael's today, uh, but I like them. They're cute and decorative, but also functional. And what we're going to do is we are going to string our beads on to our ornament. And it just makes a real a cute little decorative hanger. And this time, let's start with green, because I think we're going to use a red and white gingham bow, just like the other one. This is the stitching with the housewives ribbon. And that's what we're going to do next is make our bow. You can do as many or as few of these beads as you like. I tend to probably go a little bit more on the conservative, not, not going too many. I like the little bit of touch, but I don't want the whole thing too beaded. So after I have them strung on there, I'm just going to look at it, see what I think. I think that's cute. So we're going to go with it, and I am going to take my two tails here, make sure that they're pulled evenly, and I am going to simply knot this. And I'm going to try to get it as close to my beads as possible to secure them in place. Then I am simply going to come up a little ways longer and I'm going to do that again. And this is going to be like the little hanger where it hangs on the branch. So I don't really need it to be too far up. I'm going to knot it and then just snip those ends. And now we have our little hanger. All right, let me get my rickrack out of the way. So now I want to make this bow. This is my ribbon. I've had some questions about this too, if you don't follow my floss tube and didn't see me show this. I have my ribbon by color. Please ignore. That needs to be wound back on there. But I love it. These storage containers are from Amazon, and I do have these linked in my shop as well. Here is what we want. This is the Stitching with the Housewives ribbon. And I want to start with about 20 inches of this ribbon. So I'm just going to pull this out. I'm going to make a double loop ribbon. I'm going to cut off 20 inches of this. If it's a little too long, that's fine. I can always cut it down. And then this is just, I have, it says red and orange, but that's a lie. I need to update that. I have so much red. <laughs> so I have a bunch of these. Here's what we're going to do to make the bow. And I'm going to make it in real time. I know I showed this in a card making video. We want to leave about three to four inches. And we are going to use these two fingers. So I'm kind of holding it right here. And our, these fingers are going to be used to make the loop. Now this isn't going to work if you're going to make a huge bow, but for a tiny bow like this, uh, it works great. So we're going to go over our index finger, over our middle finger. We're just basically making figure eights. And then I'm going to come up right here. So I've come around that last time. I'm going to hold it there so you can kind of see. Then that opening right there, I'm going to pinch with my thumb, those two, and I'm going to pull through, and it kind of creates this little loop here, right? And I didn't leave a very long tail. Maybe I left too much. I'm going to trim it up anyway, but I would have liked to have a little bit more to play with. Okay, let me show that again. So I'm going to take this. Actually, let's just start over and leave a little less tail. So I have my fingers, I'm holding this end. We're gonna go like that, figure eight. Now I have a little bit more, this will be easier to show. We're gonna stick it through the fingers like that. And it really creates this little loop here. We're gonna pull around and we're going to take the end of our ribbon through there and pull tight 
just like that. Okay? I'm going to take the other end now loose, kind of pull them both down, and slide it off my fingers. Then you can kind of pull your loops out however you like. Kind of play around with it. If it, you know, you can always redo it if you're not happy with it. But look how pretty that is. You guys, I think this is like a game changer for bows. I don't know about you, but I love it. Okay, so I'm going to leave the tails long for just a minute. And if you kind of want them, I notice they're a little bit more in the back. On my other one. Let me see if I can manipulate <laughs> manipulate the ribbon to kind of go more so it's out at the sides a little bit more. I might end up redoing this. We will see. Yeah, I'm going to redo it. Good, you get to see it again. So see, sometimes if you don't exactly like it, I need to pay better... Oops, I have a knot. I need to pay better attention to where my tails are when I pulled them down because I would like them to go out to the side because I don't want them to cover up my house. Let me just fix that. All right, so I'm just gonna leave a little short tail. Come around the back, go through the two fingers. We have a little loop here. We're gonna pull our tail up and around and come through that loop. And then try to knot it. Actually, I like, yeah, that looks better. Can try to get that in between the two fingers evenly, and we're just going to slide it off. Yes, I think that's what I did wrong. Well, not wrong necessarily, but this time the loops are going to be more in the back, which is what I want, or on the sides. And then we can simply adhere it right there. Now my only thing is these are really closer together. You guys, I'm gonna just start over again. So if you want it to be, a, and I keep leaving my knot when I pull it. If you want it to be close, a little bit tinier, keep your fingers closer together. To show you in the video, it's easier to do it. <laughs> Uh, with them wide apart, but I'm going to keep them a little closer together to keep my loops. And let's leave a little longer tail. So I'm going to hold it with my fingers, push through, got my little loop. I'm going to take that tail through and we're going to pull it tight. And see, I kept my fingers closer together. In fact, sliding it off is going to be a little trickier, but it's going to leave us with a smaller bow. <laughs> Got some finger. And I think that smaller bow is going to be cuter for this ornament. Because even that one was smaller than the one I just made. Oh, you guys, I like this one. Third time's a charm. All right. So here is our bow. I am going to kind of pull my ribbon out to the side a little bit. Now I think that there is a front and a back to the bow. So see, here's the knot. That to me is the back. This looks lots cuter. And I think this bow works best, the finger bow, with a, this is probably about as wide of ribbon as you want. It's what, probably three quarters? I can't remember exactly. And it's in the box, I can't see it. Um, but I'll look for sure and I'll put it in the, I will link to it in the description. So I'm just gonna put some glue on the back. Almost put too much glue on the back. And we are going to glue it right here underneath the ornament and right above our stitch. And before that glue dries, 
going to pull my ribbon out to the side a little bit and just press. You guys will have to tell me if you try it and if you like it and you're happy with your little bows. Okay, to make the cute little notched edges, and this is why I like to have more than enough, I am going to fold my ribbon in half. I'm gonna take my scissors, and you can leave these tails as long or as short as you want, and we're going to cut at a diagonal. And that's going to give you a pretty little finish. We're going to do this one. Same thing. Don't go this way because then it'll have a funny pointy tip. And there we go. And then you can kind of, I'm letting my, I think my glue is probably dry now. Or set up. You can kind of fluff that bow right back up. You could put a little button in the center if you want. I don't think it needs it. I think the little be wood beads are plenty. But how cute is that? <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys. I am just loving it. I want to finish all of the ornaments. <laughs> I want to do all of them now. So here is uh, the finishing tutorial on finishing a round ornament or any kind of round um, it doesn't have to be an ornament if you're going to put them in like the little tins or or you're doing maybe the stitching with the housewives finishes. You can definitely kind of use some of these same tips for that. And I hope you enjoyed uh, the round finish and the bow tutorial. Definitely let me know in the comments if you want to see more finishing ideas. And I will see you guys later. Bye. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click that like button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new floss tube stitching or quilting video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today, and we'll see you next time.